Hi you newbies, I thought that I would welcome you to my sofa and no word of a lie, this is actually my sofa in my living room of my brand new house. Now this is not a version of my sexual history but it is something that's in my personal sexual history so I thought that I would broach it because we've all been wondering and I've noticed on the YouTube analytics bit Cebu, if you have a certain amount of views or whatever you can actually look what people are searching for when they are searching for your channel <laughs> and one of mine was vagina cast and that's led people onto my channel so I decided that I would broach the subject of my vagina plaster cast. Now I actually, I, this is the behind, my vagina is not mutilated guys, this is the behind of the plaster cast um, and I thought that I would talk about it just to kind of give you an idea of the day of what happened of my experience of getting my vagina plaster casted and just generally why and, and what kind of happened behind that of why I have a plaster cast of my own genitals which is something that I wear proudly on my shelf in my new home and when people come to visit me they say why do you have a plaster cast of your genitals Michaela and this is the answer I give so I thought that because you and I are friends that I would talk about it to you and you can know the history behind the vagina plast cast if you haven't been around on my channel for very long. Now in 2000 and 2009 I appeared on a Channel 4 TV show called The Joy of Teen Sex. Now the way that I got onto this TV show was that I saw an advert on the back of a magazine about sexual problems. So if you have a sexual problem you would phone up or email and then hopefully they would get back to you on a response. That was the kind of gist of the advert that I got. I had no idea that it was for TV or anything like that and I thought that my problem perhaps would be given as an example as something that the doctors could answer on the TV show and I just thought that my problem was generally very interesting. Now at the time I'd been seeing my partner Luke for probably about three years because in total we were, in, we were together about five years and we broke up in 2011 so it must have been about three years that we've been seeing each other at this point. Now when we were seeing each other, he refused flat out to perform oral sex on me. And this was just something that was, it was a problem in our relationship because I felt that he didn't like my body and he didn't like the fact that I was a woman because he, was, he would refuse to even look at my vagina. Now, I received a lot of public, like publicity of this problem, obviously, but I received a lot of negative things towards me saying that, oh, your boyfriend is obviously gay, um, oh, I'll perform oral sex on you. And these are all kind of fallouts of said program that I would receive via Facebook, Twitter, even YouTube private messages. You might even be able to see some of the residual comments on my um, Joy of Teen Sex Channel 4 videos that I did at the time, which were just to kind of stem the fire of people that were finding me via Google and just, you know, spamming me at that point. So we were together for about three years at that point and we were having an issue because he refused to perform oral sex on me. So I emailed the program or the production company of said program and just described in a very long email my frustrations about the problem and I just wanted to know, is it normal? Do people have this problem? Is, is he gay? Is there something wrong with me potentially? You know, all of those issues. And they got back to me almost immediately and said, oh yeah, we've already filmed the pilot, so don't worry about that, you're not going to be on the pilot. And they didn't answer my question and I was ridiculously frustrated because all I wanted was an answer. Am I normal? Are we normal? Is this something that I should actually worry about? Um, and I just didn't get an answer. I just got a flat out automatic message of the pilot's already been filmed, don't worry about it. So I ignored the message, a little bit pissed off, but you know what, I thought, that's fine. I'll just keep living my life. And it was about three months later, obviously this problem is still, it was continuous for our entire relationship, so obviously this, the problem is still happening. He had a phobia of vaginas, to say. Um, this problem was still happening, and I received a phone call out of the blue, and it was someone from the production company, and they said, hi Michaela, um, your email was so funny, it was so witty, you know, you joked about it, and obviously I joked about it, I was quite nervous about the subject, and I'd never really spoken to anyone about, about it before, bar my closest friends at that point, um, and I was quite nervous, and I just didn't expect it at all, and at this point I was also studying media in university, so the chance to work with a big production company was something that I was really looking forward to. So I spent about two hours on the phone with this woman kind of asking questions and she would ask me questions um, about what was going on and all of that for the production company. I thought that this was just to get permission to use my, at this point I had no clue, I thought that this was just to get permission to use my story on TV and perhaps 
I don't know, they were looking at sexual journalism and all of that. I had no idea really what the TV show was about and the way that the advert was worded, again, didn't lead me to believe that I would actually physically be on TV. Now she spoke to me for about an hour and a half and I still didn't really receive any information about my problem, just a few, um, ah oh, yeah, that sounds really difficult, yeah, well that's certainly the kind of problem that we want to feature on your show. So at this point I thought, oh okay, they're going to push my problem to a psychologist and then maybe I'll get an answer in an email and that's fine or maybe some, some therapy or something that we could seek or whether I should just abandon him completely and just decide to set my vagina free onto the male population of the world. That didn't happen. Um, after that phone call, it was about three days later, and I received another phone call. And she said, now you just need to fill out a form. And I said, o okay, is that so that you can use my story? And she went, um, well, yes and no. It's actually an application to be on the show. At this point, I was a little bit taken aback, and so was Luke as well, because we didn't expect this at all. Um, just didn't expect to actually be on TV. I mean, it's a very private thing. And at that point, I thought that I was just getting a problem answered by email. I don't know, like a Dear Deirdre column or something. So yeah, they answered and they asked me to fill out an application form, which they emailed to me and I did. Um, and then they asked me to come in for a screen test. At this point, I was slightly nervous because this was a very private problem. But you know when you're in something already and you've been speaking to this person already for a few weeks and it's been in your life for so long that it's very gradual. It's like a step by step and you don't realise how, de how deep the water is until you're out in the middle of the ocean. It was a little bit like that. So she asked Luke if he wanted to come along for the screen test, not mentioning anything to do with us actually being on camera or anything like that. So we went to the screen test in London, um, it was a fun day out, you know, we went to a restaurant, we got lunch, we went to the screen test, we spoke to everyone, it was really interesting to see the inside of a production company who makes programmes for a mainstream channel like Channel 4, so that was a really really fun day and they sat us in a room and there was a massive professional camera there. And then, and uh, because I work with media, it was very easy to suddenly forget that the camera's there. And I also made YouTube videos, uh, this was very beginning, but I also made YouTube videos a, a little bit. So it was very easy for me to forget that the camera was actually there and not a physical person. Um, but there was someone slightly off to the camera asking me questions, and it was very much like, so Michaela, have you ever had anal sex? And I was so relaxed at this point, I'd been speaking to this woman on the phone for weeks, I just answered and I answered every single question that they threw at me with, you know, honesty and I just had a little bit of a laugh with it because at that point I knew it was a screen test, not many people apart from the people in the room were probably going to watch the footage back and at this point I really didn't care if I was on the programme, I just, I really didn't. And we did an interview with me and Luke together and they found us quite funny together because I mean, to say what you say, we did we did break up in the end, but you know, we did have a very funny relationship. We were both, I'm not ashamed to admit this, but we were both very funny people when we were together. So we were sitting next to each other, making jokes about the whole situation, and they said that they found our chemistry on screen and our relationship together very strong, and they wanted him to appear on the programme as well. So he did, um, he agreed to be on it as well, and they called us back about two weeks later, and they said, congratulations, we would like to film some more of you for the next episode of The Joy of Teen Sex. Now obviously not, not a lot of people know, not a lot of people know this, but we actually had to see a psychiatrist or a psychologist. We had to see someone to talk about our mental well-being before we went into the whole process of The Joy of Teen Sex to find out why we were doing this, what kind of people we were, and that it wasn't going to put undue stress on our relationship or undue stress on us as people in general. So we saw a psychologist, we spoke to him for probably about an hour each and he cleared us to go and then after that they would phone us randomly and say, oh are you free in a week's time, we want to do X segment with you, we want to do this segment with you, all of these kind of things. Basically, they took us to a house in London um, to film The Joy of Teen Sex. It was a absolutely amazing Hackney Town house, which had probably about four levels. It used to be a pub. It had this kind of shabby chic thing going on. It was so good. And there was this um, chaise lounger and all of that. And there were a few people that were kind of walking in and out who belonged to um, Channel 4 and to the production company. Now, it was really fun talking with all of these people. And my favourite one, actually, was the woman that owned a sex shop because she had a trunk of wonderment. She had like so much stuff and um, she let me root through it and I was pulling out butt plugs and vibrators and massage ones and holding them up and because of the amount of pornography that I consume obviously I knew what every single instrument was. <laughs> 
Luke however didn't, he seemed a bit scared <laughs> at this point, so I was pulling out dildos and stuff, with, you know, the suction cups so they can stay upright or against a wall, that kind of thing. So that was really, really fun. Um, and we also watched a small amount of pornography. This was really soft core pornography at this point, and they were trying to gauge Luke's reaction. They were saying, well, obviously that we can desensitize you to, you know, your phobia of vaginas by making you watch a small amount of pornography. And this was uh, very soft, very soft core pornography. You didn't really see anything. Um, and his reaction was just like, mm -hmm. And I was just watching it just like, yeah, I've seen much hardcore stuff that's made me, even me, want to vomit a little bit. That is not pornography. That's like, that's like a film that they'd show after nine o'clock. That's not pornography at all. So basically that was really funny. And there were another number of people as well. There was one person who, her claim to fame was that she was James Corden's sister. Oh god, she just did not care about us at all. She was the first person we saw actually on that day and it made me so frustrated because you know when someone just does not care and they are totally for the camera with their red lipstick and everything like tell me about tell me about your problem dear. You know, tell me about your problem. And it was just really oh, I just I just hated it. I just hated it so much speaking to her and actually made me lose faith in the whole day before we'd even begun. We sat on a chase lounge and we talked about everything and it was just frustrating. And at this point, it was very obvious that we weren't gonna get the help that we needed. We were basically just prized pigs being shown around the show for TV. And I don't know what I expected really, to be honest. At this point, I'd kind of lost heart, but it was still quite fun. And the amount of free stuff that they gave me on the day was quite interesting. I had so many flavoured lubes and they weren't just like cheap flavoured lubes either. They were like strawberries and cream and strawberry shortcake and like raspberry and kiwi and all these very posh ones in very nice bottles that, you know, I've had on my side for a while. I wouldn't use them just because I don't really see the points in flavoured lubes, but um, yeah, I have them on my side in really posh bottles and people always assume that they're perfume bottles, <laughs> as I've really said. Um, so, so yeah, I got some free stuff, so that was always good from the uh, lady with the sex sex, um, sex trunk with all of the butt plugs in. Whee! Um, so that was very fun. And um, the third person, well, she was actually the second person we saw was actually a sexual therapist. Now, she wasn't really interested in me. She was interested in Luke. So she took him away into this room which had basically vaginas everywhere. I think it was an art installation actually that an artist had come in and just put vaginas everywhere. It's like the wall of vagina. And he came out like feverish, like sick. And it was just like, he was not happy and having any of it at all. And at this point, I think he thought to himself, why the fuck am I even doing this? He was just not happy at all. And it was just, she gave him some exercises to do, some things that he could do at home that would help, you know, the situation. And some of them were really good about taking it slow, all of that, but he just wasn't really having any of it at this point. And it was frustrating me because at the end of the day, as I said to all of my friends at the time, it's free therapy. I thought this could get you to the root of a problem that's perhaps began, perhaps been going on for years. And I just wanted to sort the problem out at the end of the day. So we spent about one day just going through and we were there for hours, we were there from like 8 o'clock in the morning until 6 o'clock at night with all of the crew answering questions and the bits of the TV show that you guys saw if you did watch it which is only like 30 seconds we were there for hours just answering all of these questions and then at the end um, they say oh can we just get some shots of you listening or like like listening shots so that they could cut them in while the therapist was talking because I think they probably could tell that I was very bored with um, Miss Miss Corden or James Corden's sister because she didn't really care about anyone else other than herself. So <clears throat> at this point we came away seemingly cured um, and we knew that we were going to be doing another day or kind of like an ending interview as it were to say this is what happened, this is what we're going to do and I'll get to that a bit later but I received a phone call out of the blue in August and they asked me if me and Luke could be in the title sequence basically they wanted us bouncing on a bed in our underwear We again thumbs up, lots of thumbs up in this video they wanted us bouncing up and down, down in a bed in our underwear and I thought that it would be really really fun um, unfortunately I couldn't do it, that's why I wasn't on the title sequence because I had a holiday booked at the time we were going to Ireland for my one of my aunt or uncle's 40th birthday and it was going to be a big celebration about 50 members of my family all came out to Ireland and it was so much fun but unfortunately because of that we couldn't be on the title sequence and 
So that was a bit of a bummer, but they phoned me when we got home and they said, I remember it being, it was just in August. They phoned me in July and they wanted us on the first week of August. And they said, we want you to meet the artist at the, the Great Wall of Vagina, which Luke almost had a panic attack when he saw. I said, mm, okay then. Um, and then they said to me, we want you to have your vagina plaster casted. And at that point, my heart kind of froze a little bit. I realised, oh fuck, this is going to be on national television. What? Oh my God, what am I doing? Um, I said, I'll think about it. And he said, okay then. Um, I just thought that it would be a really interesting thing to have done on the show. Um, and I had to go away and think about it for a few days because at that point it really hit home what was happening, that my vagina could potentially be on TV and that I just wouldn't, I just didn't want that to happen. So I spoke to Luke about it. He was quite depressed about this whole notion. He said, are you sure you want to do this? We had a quite a big falling out about it. The only reason that I did do it is because I drew up a list of conditions that I emailed over um, and I asked them to, to adhere to, such as I don't want any direct shots of my vagina. I, you know, you're able to show it tastefully from certain angles, but you can't show a direct shot of my vagina. I mean, I don't want everyone to see my flaps. I just, do, I just don't. So that was the condition. And they did adhere to it somewhat, but then, I'll, okay, I'll talk about that afterwards. Let's actually talk about the process of getting your vagina plaster casted. So this is my plaster cast. I'm just gonna cover it for now. I will show you because if you've watched the show, you've probably seen my vagina anyway. But this is the plaster cast. This is how big it is. So obviously it's the size of my vagina, like my actual vagina, like the pubis mound and then the beginning of the lips, but not like spread eagle kind of thing. So I arrived at the studio and there was a load of fucked up art there. There was a cat, like a taxidermied cat that had had its head cut open and like a fake vagina sewn in. And the artist cheerfully, I mean, I loved the guy. He was so funny, but he came in and he just went, oh yeah, that's my pussy cat. So yeah, it was fun. But there were lots of penises around, lots of vaginas. There are a few like pregnant bellies that have been plaster casted, some other stuff as well. And it was just a generally good atmosphere. It was a little artist studio in Brighton and there was a cafe next door called the Free Bees Cafe where they did a really, really good full English breakfast. Really, really reasonable. And it was basically in some guy's living room. So if you live in Brighton or you go to Brighton, search for the Three Bees Cafe. I mean, it's been like, it's been five years and I still remember that breakfast. So that's all I can say. Just go down there and it's this guy in his living room with a kitchen, like just cooking away, having a chat and stuff. And it's so cozy, but it's so nice. It's one of those really like hidden gems. So that was next door to the plaster casting studio. And so I went in and he basically was mixing this blue stuff in a big container and I had shaved fully, like obviously we're going to talk about the history of pubic hair in one of my other videos. I will probably leave the link down below in the description if you are so inclined. But I was completely shaved at that point um, because I knew that they were going to pull something off me and I just did not want to experience the hair just ripping from its follicles. So I completely shaved at that point and he got his razor out and he seemed all disappointed like, oh, no, I don't get to shave you. <laughs> okay. Um... So yeah, I spread eagled there, and at this point there were probably a room of about six different people, like with a, a big view of my vagina, and it was just a bit scary at this point. Luke wouldn't even look at it, he was like in the corner, like buried with head against the corner, refusing to look at me or anything, or any of the vaginas in the room. Uh, <laughs> oh my god, sorry, I can't stop laughing. Um, he just wouldn't even look at me at this point. Um, and he was mixing this big thing of blue and he just poured it over my vagina. And it was ice cold, like I'm talking ice cold because it needs to be ice cold to give it time to like, get in all the crevices and stuff before it hardens and becomes the mold for the plaster. So he poured it on and I was like, ah! You could probably see me in the TV episode if you watched it or whatever, or you can find it online if you want to. Um, but I was just like, Aah! it just was really cold. And I had to sit there and be calm um, whilst it, I had this stuff, like this goop on my vagina. And he pulled it off and it kind of hurt a little bit because it's got it's in all the crevices and then pulls off. And he took it away and he decided to mix the plaster and everything. So we went back into the room at this point, like put my skirt down, demurely like a lady, um, walked back into the studio, I was looking at all the art and everything, and they were filming us, um, having reactions, none of, none of this was shown, but they were filming us having reactions to all of the other stuff, Luke feeling a little bit sick. And the guy came out and said, okay, now we want to do another one. I was like, what? 
they were like, well, you get to keep one, um, but we're going to have Luke pour the plaster cast on you. Um, and he's going to be like the one like casting you technically. James is going to teach you how to do it. So I was like, oh, okay then, this is a bit crazy. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, go for it, fine, whatever, I've already had it done once today. So they filmed that one as well, that wasn't shown in the final episode that I actually had two casts because they let me take one home. Uh, Channel 4 actually paid the artist to, so I was able to take it home. And they put down the wall of vagina, so there were loads and loads of vagina plaster casts in front of me, like one of them was a, pre uh, a, horm a transsexual taking hormones, so her clitoris looked like a small penis, there were some with just vaginal piercings all over the labia. So many piercings, like so many piercings that I just I couldn't imagine the plaster being pulled away without sun tearing, oh my God. And just so many vaginas. But I pointed at mine straight away and I went, that one's mine. I mean, any, any woman, I swear, any woman that's remotely curious about her genitals has sat like legs apart in the mirror and looked at herself and just had a look at her vagina. I swear, this is just a thing, this is a thing when you're a teenager, so don't judge me, it's not sexual, you just need to, you just need to have a look, and if you're a teenager who hasn't had a look, then just have a little look, because it pays to know that you're not a freak down there, that you look like everyone else, and you look like the vaginas in the picture, if not like a porn star's vagina, I don't look like a porn star's vagina, because I'm not heavily beaten, oh, boom, no, don't worry about that, anyway, so... <laughs> Basically, I was looking at the vagina tray, the tray of vagina, tray of vagina, like McDonald's with a twist. Um, I was looking down and I pointed at my vagina straight away. I knew it, I went, that's my vagina. And um, they said, no, it's not. Because they didn't want me to pick it up straight away. They wanted me to go, mmm, ah, uh, so they could say the statistic, like 70% of women don't know what their own vaginas look like. So they were telling me that it wasn't my vagina. I said, they know that's my vagina. They went, well, pick the next best one. I was just like, best one? <laughs> <laughs> I have to choose a vagina. <laughs> um, but I still said that's my one and they were just, just pretend you're picking. I was like, um, um, that one? <laughs> it's mine. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I did. It was my vagina, obviously. And everyone clapped, like round of applause, <laughs> seal of approval. Um, everyone knew it was my vagina because I pointed it out and they got a nice shot of the TV. My vagina looks slightly different now because I have aged. It's grey and wrinkly, less white. I, I don't know what to do with this apart from have it on my shelf. People suggested to me that I paint it gold. <laughs> I, I could, I don't know. Why don't you suggest what I could do to my vagina plaster cast or my real vagina in the comments below and I will probably do it in a further video where I paint my vagina plaster cast polka dot, polka dot cast, polka dot vagina. Anyway, so yes, I had this plaster cast that Channel 4 paid for me to take home, so I did. Um, and yeah, that was kind of the end of it, but they were really focusing the camera on my cast because I refused to have a direct shot of my vagina, so they felt that they could obviously get a direct shot of my cast. It's my vagina, people! It's my vagina! Oh my god! Anyway, so yeah, we went home, and then we got called up a few weeks later and said we want to do an ending interview. I was like, okay, so me and Luke actually sat down and we decided what we're we going to say to these people because everyone wants the Jeremy Carl fix, they want the hug at the end, they want everyone to be perfectly fine. And to be honest, we weren't at this point. The problem was still happening, even with the sexual exercises. There was no way that anything was going to be happening and it had really driven us apart as a couple at this point. So after a talk, we decided that we would speak to the people on camera and we'd say, we've decided that we're going to take it slow, we've decided it's not the most important thing, um, we've decided that we're probably going to seek surgery, not surgery, sorry, we're probably going to seek therapy to try and uh, get to grips with why it's such a big issue for us as a couple. And we came away from that and they said, okay then, do you want to do something where you turn off the lights and that's the end of it and blah blah blah. So they had us film some other little bits and pieces like people, us coming in and out of the room, that kind of thing. And I didn't think anything of it until the show aired and they basically made out that we had oral sex on camera and we didn't, we didn't. We had a two hour interview in which we said that we did not feel ready, that we weren't going to do it and because we had signed a consent form right at the beginning to say that they can use the footage, they had edited it, edited it in such a way that it made us seem that we were having oral sex on camera and that the problem was solved. And that's why I refused to speak to Channel 4 when they tried to get me to push the next season on my Twitter feed when they asked me if I wanted to make a video on it for my YouTube because they saw how many views that I'd gotten um, and that's why I refused point blank 
to have any more contact with the production company because of the way that they had made out in the end of the video that I'd had oral sex. They basically made me a slut for TV despite the fact that since I was 16, the age of consent, I had had one boyfriend and one boyfriend alone and I just, I just, I was angry and I refused. Um, so yeah, that's kind of my story of my vagina plaster cast of how I got my vagina plaster cast, all of the joy of teen sex for all that happened a few years ago, if you were so inclined to know. And um, yeah, don't forget, to <laughs> don't forget to subscribe to my channel for free up, don't forget to subscribe to my channel for updates every week. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for copious amounts of pictures of my dog, because I do, I post almost every day with pictures of my dog, and she is gorgeous, although she's out walking at the moment in the woods. Yeah, and so yeah, I'll see you guys later. Boop.